Right, so I'm Shauna Lax, and this is my studio, Studio Moresca. I'm going to be showing you um, how I pull a piece out of the solvent that's been sitting in for a week. I transfer the pattern, and then the areas that I wanted to stay up, those are the ones that I painted with asphaltum. And you can see that here is what the, the black is that has been eaten away now by the orange oil, that is the solvent that I use that also tends to form the patina. So every time I do this, the, whatever is going to come out in terms of the effects of the patina and all of that is going to be different with every piece. Though of course you can see that it's going to be pretty uneven and interesting. I also see that, that I'm going to have to use something else. I'm going to use some terpenoid to get off the excess that is, is not coming off. You have to uh, seal the back of these as well, because you can imagine once it goes in the acid, it could eat right through it. So just because it's so messy, I actually use something else. I use, uh, what do I use? <laughs> I have to remember. Um, a kind of varnish that goes on the back. Uh, pretty much anything that's going to uh, keep the acid from eating through would work, but that way I don't really care so much what it's going to look like on the back, but um, usually because I, I frame them or, and I have a back into them. But, uh, but the orange oil will also eat through that, so it's very handy. Of course, I need to clean out my vessel, and at the same time, I'll probably just go ahead and dip this in it so that it can take off any of the uh, orange oil that remains on it. So once it's dried off, what I'll be doing next then is starting, first of all, I'll clean off any remaining asphalt that's on it, and then I can start using polishing tools to bring out the, the patterns. So the cutting on this was done on this uh, scroll saw. So what I did was first I, uh, I etched the piece, so it went into the acid. I could see the areas that needed to be cut. And then I drill in every space that then I will need to put under the scroll saw. And, uh, and very slowly, <laughs> one cuts because you can't be anywhere else but with, you know, with your saw as you're cutting your attention, which is a, actually, it's a beautiful uh, practice of being present. Yes, you know, there are different parts to it that are, you know, that don't take as much attention, but certainly the cut work does. And, um, and that's something that, that I had really started early to incorporate into my work because there is a crossover between the Islamic and the Hebrew um, traditions that deal with, you know, with seeing through, essentially, the veil, cutting through the veil, uh, the mashrubiyas um, in Muslim uh, architecture, and the paper cuts in, in the Jewish tradition. So I find that, that, that that's an important aspect of being able to enter into another space, another, you know, that there is something behind what appears to be so. And in this case, I've used mica. It is, you know, translucent, in my, and I love mica more than glass even. It certainly, it doesn't uh, break and is not as fragile as glass, but the fact that it is actually coming from a, you know, a, a natural crystalline uh, product, I guess you can say. It's been put in layers of, uh, of shellac, and in this case it's an amber color. This piece is called Indwelling, and um, it started off as uh, uh, the concept of the Black Madonna, which was unusual for a Jewish woman to get that kind of assignment. So I, uh, anyway, it, it was one of those things, you can see it has a lute rose window in it, that's what this cut work is, that is part of that heart belly area. Uh, 
what I saw as I was doing it, I, I felt that the, the fabric was had to be very detailed. And so that's why you see a lot of detailing in, in the fabric uh, of her uh, costume. It's very Byzantine. Uh, but as I, you know, essentially that, that image I was able to capture, I understood that, well, and I can tell you more came when I saw that there were words here and I, I heard the song, actually. It was a terrible, I, I really couldn't stand it. It was something I played for my son as he was growing up. We were homeschooling. And I sort of played these things in the background. But it was a very, um, it was a tape of, uh, of for every chapter of, uh, you know, Hebrew studies, that there would be a song associated with it. But that is what the, that's what I heard as I was doing this, but the words are fabulous. And it says, V'asuli mikdash v'shachanti b'tocham, which means, make for me a space that is holy, and I will dwell within each of you. <laughs> 